Welcome back to Contextual Electronics. This is the fifth part in the Getting to Blinky series, where we're going to actually be creating footprints for all of those different parts we dropped in. <laughs> well, there's not that many, but all those parts that we dropped in uh, to the schematic in the part four, uh, three and four of the Getting to Blinky series. Oh, actually, no, part four was associating the footprints with the schematic symbols, so now we're actually going to work on those footprints. All right, let's do this. So first off, let's pick up where we left off. We'll open the KiCad launcher. We can see we have all of the different things now. We have a schematic file. We have a netlist that we created from the schematic file. We have a PCB file that's empty. And we have a component file. All right, let's, uh, hmm, what do we want to do next? We Oh, right, well, let's go in and look at the schematic real quick. Just as a quick refresher, remember this is a 555 circuit, uh, actually a 7555, that's the CMOS version. We're going to be blinking this LED over here. We're going to be having a light sensor and a normal resistor and a capacitor here. And then we're also going to have a battery. All right, and then if we go back into here, we can see the associations we made, which are not complete. We did not associate the battery component, and we're not quite sure about the, uh, what was the one? Ah, the resistor here, the R1. We weren't sure if that's going to be the one we want, but we will look at that as we drop these in here. So let's open up the PCB new program. And let's go ahead and open up the netlist. Now, if we go to the netlist here, the read netlist, this is going to actually pull up our uh, netlist file. And then there's all these different selections we can make. The default ones to start with are just fine. And what we're going to do is we're going to read current netlist. And it should be being able, it will be looking for the one that's in your project file. So that should carry through if you follow the same flow. All right. See down here that it says did not find the battery one footprint because we did not associate it, but that's okay. So we close this, and then we have a big blank screen here, and then oh, up in the corner, look at that, that's all of our parts. All right, so what does this mean for our design? Uh, they're kind of all stacked on top of each other, which is actually really quite disconcerting at first because you could, you know, mouse over it and hit M and select a footprint and then try and move it, select a footprint, try and move it, but we're going to undo that. And we're going to go back and do it the way that uh, is the easiest way to do it, which is click on the, foot, uh, the footprint mode. And then if you right click here, you can see that there's a different menu than there would be otherwise. That is the glob move in place. And what we can do is we can move all modules or we can just move the new modules. In this case, we're going to move all modules. It'll ask if you want to do that. And then it separates it out in a nice little uh, pattern here so that it's a little bit easier to actually figure out what's going on. Now you might think, oh, this is the layout. We're going to start doing the layout. But that's actually not correct. That's the next video. What we really wanted to see here is we actually wanted to see the VR1 component and make sure it's what we want. And making sure it's actually a through hole, uh, R1 being more of a generic through hole resistor here. And we wanted to make sure it's the right size. And it does appear that this is a, a good size for, for a through hole component. So we are able to leave this one. So that basically leaves us with only needing one more component, which is the battery holder. Uh, we already had chosen the uh, 7555 timer, but we actually never looked at a battery holder data sheet. So let's do that now. So I'm going to use a site called DigiKey. If you've never used it before, it's a distributor of electronic components and we're going to use a real simple uh, let's see battery holder you can see what I'm typing there let's try this all right uh, battery products we're gonna go for ah whoops we forgot to search for well 2032 which is the type of battery we want to actually use a coin cell battery let's do that and then let's search for ones that are in stock. Uh, in stock, there we go. <laughs> and we're going to sort by price. We'll go ascending price. All right, what do we have? We have two different ones, three, four. Ah, okay. So it looks like 
We have a bunch of different ones available here uh, from a couple different vendors. So let's try and stay. Yeah, that looks nice. So there's through hole ones, there's surface mount ones. Oh, that's. We have to be careful here. Some of these are minimum quantity, 450. We want to buy, be able to buy them one at a time. So let's make sure we focus on that. There's one that's 49 cents. Make sure there's a bunch available, which there are. All right, that's good. Uh, I would highly recommend you check into this before you uh, start building footprints like we're going to. But let's grab this one here. Huh, apparently my dogs are excited about battery holders. Uh, let's see. So we will, uh, let's look at the data sheet here. And we should be able to pull out the footprint, uh, which will be custom. Ah, but simple. That's nice. All right, so we could have done a through hole one, but we're actually going to do uh, simple square ones here. And we see that, it, so it's three pads, but it's actually the two outside ones are the plus pads, and then the middle one is actually the minus pad. And we'll do it to that effect. So let's, uh, let's move that over. And then, okay, so now from here, we're going to actually build a footprint. To do so, we go into the module editor, which is also the footprint editor. And then we can uh, start actually building one. So we're going to go new module. We'll call this CR2032, even though that has its own foot footprint name. We'll move the reference around. Move the value around. We'll change the name of the footprint. So each each footprint will have will increment from from one onwards. So we'll call that BAT instead of Val. Okay. Then we see this right here. If you look down in the bottom right corner here, you can actually see the the location of the cursor, and it is in inches. Uh, so if we go right to the middle there, it's zero zero. If we go to some other location here, you can see it's a uh, you know, 23, 5, and 110 mils. We can actually hit the space bar, and that actually zeroes out this differential one here. And we can actually, that's how we want to measure. So if you pick a point and you want to measure from this point, you hit space bar. Then over to here, you can see that is 215 mils or 0.215 inches. So that's really useful for, you know, setting, setting a reference point and then measuring from there. That's how you do measurement here in KiCad. Okay, so we're going to, let's move this to the right, and we've got our data sheet somewhere here. Let's pull that back up. There we go. All right, so the, uh, let's see, so we have millimeters, and then we have, is that right? Mm, yeah, I think that is, so uh, let's see, we can look on the drawing. Decimal fractional yeah it starts with uh, we can check that real quick too and so if we pull up our calculator and we take 6.07 divided by 25.4 which is millimeters to inches yep so this 0.24 is inches so that's what we want so we want a 0.24 by 0.24 square pad so let's go ahead and create that. So we're going to start at 0, 0 here. We're going to hit Pad. Click here. And then it drops a default pad. We're going to mouse over it, hit E to edit it. And then we can actually enter the uh, shape that we want. So this is going to be a surface mount hole, or surface mount pad, rather. So it's, you, so you got rid of the hole there. Shape's going to be rectangular. We can actually put in size here. So this will be... 0.24 and 0.24. All right, nice square pad. You can see these are the different layers that it's assigning. So all the different uh, solder mask and uh, paste and uh, copper is already built in there. So this is the front side pad. All right, there we go. That's our first pad. Now what we're going to do is, and that's going to be, that'll be one. So actually we can go back in and name that. Uh, actually, no, we don't want to name that. I'm sorry. We want to associate that with the schematic there. So let's pull the schematic up real quick because we should feel comfortable switching back and forth between the uh, schematic and footprint. So if we look here on this sch schematic symbol, one is actually plus and two is minus. So we want to switch that around what we were looking at there. 
Uh, let's see. Yeah, that's the wrong one. There it is. So we want this to be channel uh, pit pad two because that'll be minus. And then once we create another pad, we're going to have so both side pads here are plus, and we're going to have plus be uh, pad number one, so it associates well with the schematic symbol. All right, so let's go and drop another pad. Now this is where we're actually going to need to measure it as well to make sure we're within the uh, the proper spacing. So let's see here. We can tell from this, this uh, shows the two pads being 25.91 millimeters apart or 1.02 inches apart. So if we uh, split the difference as well, we can do that math. So it should be 0.51 uh, from the center point here to the center point of the other pad. And we can actually measure that using our uh, uh, using our measurement tool down here in the bottom. Make sure that full screen. All right, so we're gonna let's just place the pad first. We're gonna go and edit that. Make this pin one. Okay, we're gonna create one over here. Doesn't like when you add new pads. Edit this. Make this pin one. Okay, and then let's move them into place. So we can see this is zero zero still, and then we're gonna want this to be at. So we hit move, it should grab the center of the pad there. And then if we zoom in a little bit, we can see we're just about uh, a little high there. So we're going to move that down. Oh, wrong way. Is that the wrong way? That is the wrong way. Ah, that's the differential. See, that's where I got tripped up. You can see the differential here is, is wrong. So we actually want to look at the absolute, which is over here. So we move 5, 1, and there we go. All right, and then if we move this one, move it to minus five one and zero. Is that right? Let's move that one more time. There we go. Five one and zero. All right, so now if we go to the center of this pad, hit the space bar, that sets our new zero, and we should be able to measure over to here, center of this one is 1.02 and it's on the same y uh, zero for the y-axis so we have a footprint all right so this one is uh, relatively simple but it's always okay to start simple so let's uh, save the library and actually before we do that let's just double check one more time just to make sure we look good here so we've got the pads correct size. Oh, we can actually measure the outside diameter if we wanted to as well. So that's probably a good thing to, to double check, making sure the outside of the pads is the same. So it should be 1.21 on the outside. So if we set our zero point here, and we go to the other side. Ah, 1.26. So something went wrong there. I wonder what. Huh. Well, that's interesting. Based on the stack up and the, the center points there, we should be okay. The thing that I think we might be playing against here is the the fact that this says minimum. And that might be actually be affecting us here. Especially because six point zero seven is uh is a little bit less than point two four. So that could also be affecting us. So, uh we'll just let that one go. We we are good with minimum, so it should be okay. Uh and if there is a little bit more on the outside, as long as the pad is wide enough, that should be fine. All right, so let's go ahead and save this to a library. And we'll do that by going to File, Save into a new library. And then we'll call this hmm, GTB should be, I don't wonder if it already has a library here. We'll call it GTB2 just in case. That's odd. All right, so we save that. Uh, we can open up. Oh, we have to actually go back into the schematic editor. Oops, save and exit. Ah, that's why. It's kind of a catch-22 here. We need to actually go into the editor. We need to add the library. Be, uh, GTB is not yet added. 
So if we go to C, C, getting to Blinky. Ah, that did not save it. So let's go back and make sure we save that file in the correct place. Perhaps I had saved a different GTB library when I was practicing. Uh, so we go back into the editor, and then we save into a new library. Let's make sure it's in the correct... Ah, yes, that is a wrong location there. There we go. And we will call this GTB. There we go. Select Active Library. We can't select it because it's not there, but we should be able to add it from that location we were just using. Oops. Library. Add. C. GTB. Get into Blinky. And there it is. That'll make you, so whenever you add a new library, it'll ask you to add save your project, which we did. And now if we go back and close this, save and exit, well, we should be able to, s uh, yes, we can set the library. Set the library, save the component, save it as that, and we're good to go. Now, because we didn't yet set the, the footprint, we should go back into the uh, CVPCB tool. Go back into here. We can search over here by C. If you hit C or the letter that starts with, you can go down to the area. You can only do it by one at a time, unfortunately. We set that. That's good to go. We can save the component file. Minimize this. We can reload the netlist. And there it is. It's a little big, but uh, it definitely works. Ah, now the other thing we could have done, and actually we should do this, is we go back in and edit it. We should add an outline, just just to make it uh, a little bit easier to look at. You know, this is just a couple pads, but uh, it's nice to have a graphical outline so that you know what you're looking at when you drop it onto your schematic. So we'll try and get a general outline here as well. Nothing too fancy. You can see kind of this odd shape here. We should be able to do that if we select by the line. This will just be a graphical thing. Hopefully not too messy. Let's go inside here. And click. Kind of looks like a home base for a baseball. Ooh, that was a little messy back. Oh, man. <laughs> well, um, Picasso, Picasso, I am not. We could also do this by the uh, by the coordinates if we wanted to. I'm just kind of eyeballing it here. Yeah, it's a little better. A little Frankenstein looking head thing. And double click to finish. There we go. And then we can save again, S which part number, and there we go. So uh, now if we want to actually reload a component we've already used here, we actually delete the component. Mouse over and hit delete. It's going to ask you because that's kind of a weird thing to want to delete out a footprint. We say yes. We reread the netlist. And we can see it did change. So that worked out nicely because that's a nice little example to have there. All right, uh, we are good to go. We will go over the actual layout in the next video. Save that, and we're good to go. Thanks for watching.